Okay, we're back with Types of Collisions Parts 2. Uh, I didn't really have time to finish my point, so I'm, now I have a little more time. Let me go back. If you remember the last one, this, is, this paper is a mess right now, so maybe I'll put this on a different paper. If you remember the last one, our kinetic energy uh, should not have been conserved. So let me show you that it wasn't, okay? In fact, we can figure out how much thermal energy was created in this process. So um, I'm going to just find the kinetic energies before. So the kinetic energy before the collision total um, before is one half five kilograms times two meters per second squared plus one half times um, four kilograms times um, one meter per second squared. Hey, you might say, why am I not putting a negative here? But even if I did, this is really speed. But even if it were velocity, when you square it, it becomes positive. So um, this is going to give me, let's see, that's going to give me 10 joules plus 2 joules. So I have a total of um, 12 joules of energy. Hey, let's see about afterwards. Afterwards, we said that this velocity was two-thirds meters per second. So let's hope the numbers work out here. K afterwards is we have um, this blob of clay now that's going one half. The mass is now nine kilograms times um, the two-thirds meters per second squared. All right, so that's going to be um, four-ninths. When I square that, that's four-ninths. That will cancel out one of the, that nine, that four-ninths, that nine will cancel out that nine. And so I'm left with four times a half, so that's two joules. This is before, this is after, and um, you know how many, how much thermal energy was created in this collision? The thermal energy that was created in the collision is uh, 10 joules. Okay, so this is not an elastic collision. Let's take a look at an elastic collision between um, a cue ball and a, another ball. Let's assume, a cue, I know a cue ball might have a little more mass, but let's assume it doesn't. So here comes a cue ball. It's coming in like this. Uh, we'll just call it a mass M. And it's coming in with a speed of, uh, let's say, V. And it hits and strikes another ball that's a mass M that's at rest. So this, this one's at rest. Uh, let's call this M1 and M2, but they're the same mass. They have the same value. M1 and M2 are the same. So it's going to hit and strike that. And uh, if you've ever watched this on a pool table, if there's no spin or anything, what will happen? I'm just telling you this now. I'm just going to tell you that... Uh, that M1 will stop and, and M2 will start going with the same speed, V, afterwards. So I'm going to call this V1 and V2. And that's M2. Okay, so that's going to stop. And so um, I just want to show you that in this, in this type of a collision, this is a completely elastic collision. Um, let me just show you that like momentum before equals momentum after. So let's see, M1 times V1. Uh, plus M2 
times zero. It's not doesn't have any velocity. That equals m one times zero plus m two times v two. Now, if these have the same mass, the cue ball and the other ball have the same mass, let's we can cancel these out. And V1 is equal to V2. Yeah, that just happens on a, on a pool table. One will hit and the other one will go. You'll see this in the lab several times, too, that we do. Let me show you that it is elastic in that um, K equals K, K prime. So it does... The question is, will k equal k prime? And maybe you already see that it does, but let me just spell that out for you. So the energy at the beginning was uh, k initial was um, one half m one v one squared plus one half m two zero squared, since the initial velocity of v one v two was zero. So that gives me that cancel. So that's the total energy at the beginning. And then at the end, um, the final, uh, this one, M1, stops. And the other goes with the same speed. So indeed, if um, the V1 is V equal to V2, and if M1 equals M2, yeah, the kinetic energy is conserved. Okay. Hey, I have a little more time just to tack on one thing. Uh, just one thing that, that you should know. Um, about uh, when... When things bounce off, when, when a ball bounces off a wall, common questions say on multiple choice problems. Here's a ball, and it bounces off a wall, so it's got a speed V, and then it bounces this way. It strikes, I'm going to displace a little bit, and it comes back at that, at say V prime. Um, if they ask you for the total change in momentum, let's make this um, a 2 kilogram ball. Let's have the incoming speed be um, one meter per second, or two meters per second. Let's have the outgoing speed be um, one meter per second. It wasn't an elastic collision with the wall. This is a wall. Okay, a lot of times they'll ask, what is the change in momentum? And people get this wrong all the time because they just multiply, that's four, and this is two kilograms again still. So now it's heading back the other way. And so um, if, if that's 4 and that's 2, they think the change in momentum is 2 kilograms meters per second. But no, that's not right. What it is, is um, it's P final minus P initial. And one of these has to be negative. Let's call P final negative. So it's going to be negative. So it's going to be 2 kilograms times a negative one meter per second minus now the initial is two kilograms times um, two meters per second so that's going to be a two that's going to be a total of negative six kilograms meters per second all right that's all i have for you tonight thanks